Illinois is home to over 35 Fortune 500 companies scattered across Chicago, its suburbs, as well as other parts of the state. But in recent months, three major corporations have announced their exits. The Chicago area losing another corporate headquarters. Caterpillar is moving to Texas. Boeing is expected to move its corporate headquarters to Virginia. Billionaire Ken Griffin is relocating his hedge fund firm headquarters from Chicago to Miami. So anytime that you know major names uh, depart a metropolitan area, it's a blow to sort of uh, you know that metropolitan area's ego. So what does the exit of several major employers mean for the state, and how does it connect to broader economic trends? You know, you hear companies all across the country talk to about the business community saying, oh, we may leave, we might do it. Well, it's happening here. Those are big announcements. Tom Stringer specializes in site selection at the accounting network BDO. So, you know, Chicago would be wise to listen, try and understand the why, and then try to solve those issues. That why is different according to each company. Citadel's CEO said he views Florida as a better corporate environment and has previously complained about Chicago's crime. Caterpillar said the move supports its strategy for profitable growth and said it wasn't getting any economic or tax incentives related to the move. Caterpillar has steadily invested in right-to-work states like Texas over the last decade. And Boeing's announcement was a long time coming, according to analysts like Stringer. When the Boeing decision to come from Seattle to Chicago took place to uh, really a lot of fanfare. But it was kind of strange at the time that Boeing didn't pick Washington then, given the level of defense work that they do in the regulatory environment, FAA relationships. Lawmakers and unions have previously criticized Boeing for the remoteness of its Chicago base from its jetliner operations in the Seattle area. In a statement, Boeing said, Northern Virginia makes strategic sense for our headquarters, with the proximity to our global customers and stakeholders, as well as world-class engineering and technical talent. The move brings Boeing closer to its largest customer, the Pentagon, as well as to lawmakers and regulators. Boeing said its CEO and CFO will move, but the majority of its thousand employees will remain in Illinois. Meanwhile, Caterpillar announced roughly 230 of its corporate roles will move to the new Texas headquarters, with around 17,000 jobs remaining in Illinois. If those headquarters jobs are small, but highly compensated, making a lot of decisions, having a lot of those folks come in, using a lot of corporate services, active in the community, even though it might be a limited number of jobs, that, that, that defection hurts significantly. The moves are seen as a setback for Chicago and Illinois leaders' efforts to bring more companies to the area. In late June, the Chicago mayor's office said Citadel's exit was disappointing. The office added that Chicago's economic outlook has never been stronger and cited more than 35 new company relocations and 58 expansions made this year. The Illinois governor's office did not respond to a request for comment on the company's exiting. In a previous statement, Governor J.B. Pritzker said the state continues to be a leader in attracting companies. So having corporations uh, headquartered in your area is, is both important from a jobs perspective, but also sort of a, a pr prestige standpoint. And a company's relocation could have ripple effects throughout the local economy. Whether that's the turkey sandwich for lunch, the dry cleaning, that's pumping money into their local economy back in the, in the Chicago suburbs or if you live in an apartment downtown. So those little economic catalysts will be gone. And that will hurt. According to a recent report, approximately 4.4 jobs are created in the local non-tradable sector for every job created in the local high-tech sector. Some non-tradable jobs are lawyers, dentists, and retail clerks. And in the post-pandemic economy, some analysts say workers are still in the driver's seat. People are definitely out in front taking the lead, making lifestyle decisions, and companies are playing catch-up. Workers are moving from the coast to the middle of the country in Florida, and by many measures, red states, those that lean Republican, have recovered faster economically than Democratic-leaning blue ones. Following the national trends, there's just so much more growth in the South and the Southwest, and that's where you know some of these companies have, have moved. This movement has implications. Illinois is one of seven states that lost a congressional seat following the 2020 census, while Texas and Florida, the new sites of Caterpillar and Citadel, are two of six states that gained at least one seat. The loss of a congressional seat uh, is partly, you know, in, in Illinois' case, it is, is because of the true sort of loss of population, although it was very close to sort of zero growth. But more importantly, it's just not growing as fast as, as other areas. One area in particular is picking up Midwestern workers and employers. The Dallas-Fort Worth region in Texas in particular is where a lot of those folks are coming. 
DFW, similar to Chicago for a lot of business reasons in terms of office environment, diverse corporate services, ease of travel back and forth across the country. So Dallas has always been Chicago's kind of shadow shadow competitor. Florida is similarly benefiting from relocations as it's beginning to see an effect on its economies and finances. Florida is on track to register a record budget surplus for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, which it attributes in part to new residents. Both Florida and Texas do not have individual income taxes. Illinois, however, has a flat income tax rate of nearly 5%. Those taxes account for around half of the state's total revenue. The Illinois Chamber of Commerce has advocated for streamlining regulations and reducing taxes in the state. Chicago is still attracting companies with its roots as an economic hub for the Midwest, along with its international airport. So even as several companies exit Illinois, other corporations like Kellogg's Snack Division are expecting to move in. And Google says it plans to purchase a new office in the area, Chicago's famed Thompson Center. If it wasn't evident before, then surely it is crystal clear now. Google is one of Chicago's most important companies. Tech firms had really been starting to bulk up and, and grow uh, in the Chicago area before the pandemic, but that of course was very much slowed down by the pandemic. So this will be an interesting you know, new wrinkle uh, in downtown Chicago to, to keep an eye on. As companies try to attract new hires, some states are also working to recruit companies. Certain states are extraordinarily proactive and cities are extraordinarily proactive in recruiting based on things like quality of life, uh, incentives, workforce, showing the, the and touting the benefits of a certain community. That's because it increases, quite frankly, tax flow to a community. It's a return on investment. You know, bring customers in, if you will. For example, Virginia Senator Mark Warner said he had been lobbying Boeing's senior leadership for over a year to move its headquarters to his state. I see the cities that are really winning are those that are in the hunt, in the game, and are out knocking on doors going to meet with companies. Those might not have immediate results, but two, three, four years down the line, when a CEO changes over or the key decision makers change over, that's remembered. And that's often when it becomes successful. 